Okay, so we are live. Uh, welcome everyone. I hope you are many joining us. Uh, Facebook has kind of been blocking our views, so I hope that many people have access to, to this video today, to this live interview today. Uh, so yeah, today is the Migrant Woman Reality Watch number 15, and uh, we are welcome, welcoming Fabienne Alhuri from Lebanon. Uh, she's a national spokeswoman for the, the organization uh, Osez le Féminisme, so in English, Dare to be Feminist in France. And she is a, a, also a researcher uh, specialized in the addictive behaviors and uh, men, uh, mental health of migrant women and women in general. So welcome, Fabienne. I'm really happy to have you here today with us. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm also happy to be here. I, I uh, said the first time I'm working with the, with the network and it's always a pleasure. Thank you. I hope we can collaborate more in the future. <laughs> always um, a pleasure. <laughs> Um, so today we'll be talking about uh, porno criminality and uh, the Jackie and Michelle uh, affair. Uh, I'm gonna first of all ask you to, if you could maybe present yourself, uh, present Ose le Féminisme to the viewers that uh, don't know what it is, and if you could just say some uh, general words about uh, Jackie and Michelle, just so we can give a little bit of context to our audience. Thank you. Of course. So I'm Fabienne Alhouli. Uh, so um, I was born in Lebanon I've, and I lived there till like my 20, till I was 25. And I came to France to do a PhD and I, and I did it in uh, epidemiology. <laughs> so I, I don't work on COVID, but I'm specialized in mental health. And I'm, uh, I'm trying to develop uh, the study about the effect of sexual violence and other violence other uh, violence against women on their on the health effect of women and their mental health. So I was very surprised that it was uh, underdeveloped in Europe and even the world. So I'm trying to work on that. I'm also trying to see if I can get uh, more studies on pornography in, uh, in the mainstream medical research because uh, there's little uh, study on, on the subject, whereas I think it's it has a lot of effect watching pornography, a lot of effect on mental health. So I'm also, it's something I, I, I wish to do. And I've also worked a lot about uh, migrant women's health and I've studied um, postpartum depression among uh, migrant women in France. Uh, so that's about me and I've been a uh, I've been at Ozel Feminism for a couple of years now, and I'm the spokeswoman since uh, January 2020. So Ozel Feminism, uh, we're a feminist uh, organization, we're a French feminist organization. Uh, we also we have a we have a, an antenna in, in Switzerland, so not just French. <laughs> and uh, so uh, our feminism is really structural, it's material, it's, dare I say, radical. So we we. Uh, look at um, patriarchy as a system and we try to combat it as a system in a structural way and not just on an individual level in many ways so we do a lot of campaigns for example in, in 20, 2012 we uh, did not me I was not um, at Ozel Feminism but uh, my sisters in Ozel Feminism in mm -hmm. 2012 they did a whole campaign about the clitoris. It was called Ose le, clit uh, le clitoris, there the, the clitoris. And like mm -hmm. at that at that stage, it was like unheard of. And we were called all kinds of names for something that now it's... Uh... So we do something like that. We do a lot of, uh, a, a lot of uh, campaign to combat uh, uh, misconceptions and, 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 and uh, sexist ideas. But we also have a lot of other campaigns and one of our... Uh, main principal cause is fighting uh, prostitution. We consider prostitution as a violence. We also consider uh, uh, pornography as a violence against women. So it's something also that we, we do a lot and um, we, cam we campaigned intensively to get uh, the law that was passed in 2016 that whereas uh, starting 2016 in France, prostitution uh, the, the men who, who tries to buy the act, um, sexual act in a prostitution, the clients uh, are now criminalized, uh, penalized in France, thanks to this uh, law that also protects the prostituted women. So it's one of our main uh, principal causes. So this is other feminism. We do a lot of stuff. We are on a lot of uh, 
front, for example, we also do lobbying. We try to see uh, deputies and and um, and other people to see to 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 uh, uh, lobby for laws. We campaign. We we protest. We may or may not do collage, uh, which is completely illegal. And we you know the collage where we put the name of. Uh, of women who who do, who are who died by their husband or their ex or their partner, but we don't do this. It's, it's illegal, of course. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, we this is what we do. Uh, and uh, and what about and you ask about Jackie and Michelle? So Jackie is, and Michelle is is a French pornography site. It's the equivalent of Pornhub, but in French. And it's uh, hosted. Uh, the servers are hosted in France and. Most of uh, the filmed violence, the pornography, is filmed also in France. So this is a bit about it. Do you want to talk about, um, do you want me to tell you about the investigation and, and stuff? Uh, after, yes. But uh, first I wanted, I, it's just a curiosity of mine. I was, because I, I know that Osé de Féminisme is a big reference in France. Uh, at least for the, the women that are kind of aligned with the radical feminist view of things. But I was wondering at a local French level, if you if you women are well integrated, if you if you face a lot of backlash, um, what is um, what is the kind of the relationship between you and the, the rest of the feminist French movement? Uh, it's complicated because uh, it, it depends on the time. Mostly it's whenever we go to like public speaking as well, we, we known, so even like senators, deputies, Norris, and, and like people, most, a lot of people in the feminist uh, circles know, heard about us, but ever since like a couple of years ago, there's a bit of a backlash, as you say, as an university and among like uh, young activists, uh, the liberal feminism, whereas for example, prostitution is considered as empowering, is, 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 is getting uh, more and more uh, uh, people behind this idea, especially the young people. And we have been a lot of campaigns against us, for example, uh, for, and, and like lots of, um, <laughs> I don't know if I can say, but fake news, for example, we've been told that, we've, we've been called that, uh, that we are against prostituted women. We are told that we prosecute them Whereas the law that we fought for is one of the first law in, in Europe that decriminalized uh, prostituted women, and we 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 want the violence against them to stop. So um, there's a lot of people, a lot of powerful organizations that is, are very interested in, in diabolizing uh, abolitionist uh, feminists who are against prostitution. So it's sometimes it's 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 uh, there's a lot of tension. But uh, most of the time, it's okay. Sometimes, like for example, we, I have uh, sisters, and I have not biologic sister, but I have like um, friends who who were, for example, in, in large protest had uh, signs about uh, abolishing prostitution that were attacked mm -hmm. uh, in other feminism and in other associations. I had a friend who they were there was a, they were. Um, they sprayed her sign, for example, but these are all like people want us to think that this is the end of the world, but they are really a small minority and we should not give them more um, like uh, more reach than, than they deserve. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's harsh that these things are happening, but if there is some backlash, it also means that you're putting the finger where it hurts and that you're actually addressing the state of things. So I think overall we can we can say that it can be a positive thing sometimes, sometimes if our our safety is not put into danger. Thank you for answering that. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, so yeah, as I as we were talking before, today we're gonna be talking about the Jackie and uh, Michel investigation. Uh, for viewers that don't really know what is happening in France, uh, you mentioned that the um, Jackie and Michel is the equivalent of Pornhub in France. Um, and they produce the kind of pornographic content that we all radical feminists know and have an analysis on. Um, but I, I know, and we a lot of women know that there was an investigation that was opened against Jackie and Michel, thanks to was it a feminism as well as the uh, Mouvement Unis and Les Effrontés. So yeah, I wanted to ask you, how did that come to life? How did that happen? How 
how can you how did you achieve such a historical thing that is opening a, an investigation against a pornographic platform i think that's absolutely historical in feminism and i i wanted to know how how did that happen and um yeah how the how does it work how is it going the investigation uh, i think a, a good strategy in fighting prostitution and pornography and like i said we are against we think both are a system of, of, of male violence is always is always um putting the the the, the words and the testimonies of, of the women who are directly because other women are indirectly hurt by 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 these systems but the, the, i think the, the the best strategy is to to put to light the, the violence that they go through where in prostitution or pornography so what happened is in, in february uh, that was not us but um, there was a um, online media that uh, put an investigation whereas uh, they put uh, testimonies of, of uh, two women who were a victim of uh, direct victim of uh, Jackie and Michelle, the, the pornography site. And they, they explained, uh, these women explained that uh, not Jackie and Michelle, but uh, a shadow provider uh, that who works uh, closely with Jackie and Michelle. And we may talk about this later, how, how they use uh, schemes so they are never like caught red handed, but uh, we can talk about this later. So in the video, uh, the two women explained how, how, uh, they told them uh, to, um, they told them lies they, they were actually trafficked and raped and I know that the definition of rape is not not everybody is is a, uh, is okay with for example when I um, uh, for me all uh, prostituted uh, sexual acts are rapes but but in this case it was a rape as in the general population definition whereas whereas they forced her to do uh, physically forced her to do acts uh, that she did not want so the the testimonies were very powerful and like the the general population were like oh my god what's happening uh, so after this video we used this video and we uh, we went to the prosecutor, the Parisian par prosecutor, and we filed a complaint. So this complaint, uh, the prosecutor in, in, in Paris, uh, uh, he we, we filed it with Mouvement du Nid, which is a, an, another allied association, Les Effrontés. So based on this complaint that we filed, the, the prosecutor opened an investigation. Okay. And did you face any any difficulties while actually putting that uh, putting that request for an investigation due to the nature of uh, of the request, or it was it normal? No, it was okay, and we were accompanied by uh, by lawyers, by feminist lawyers, uh, Lauren Questio, who was a great great lawyer. So. Um, uh, um, no, we did not. Uh, we did not face because w when when the police see that you have a lawyer with you, they know that you they cannot. Uh, and this is also a privilege. I know that a lot of women don't cannot afford it. Um, but we, uh, yeah, we uh, we were uh, when the police see you with a lawyer, they know that they can they cannot uh, pressure you. And also, like. This is what happens a lot in, in France is when women come to the police station to file a report for rape or other sexual violence or other male violence. They are like rebuffed. Oh, no, we love you and stuff. But like, yeah, but we have a law. We, uh, by the law, everybody has the right to file a complaint. This is like an universal law. And not everybody knows that it's a universal law. So when you come with a lawyer, they, they don't, they usually don't uh, protest. But there is a problem um, is that the police are not used to this kind of, this kind of they, they don't know where to start because they're not used to this kind of complaint. It has never been done before, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it must be totally new for them. Nobody is trained to deal with these kind of questions. Um, but mostly because of the bravery that it, it requires to put to file such a request, because as you were saying, so many women are rebuffed that even though it's a right, as you mentioned, so many feel like they it it is not even worth it to go there, and the lack of training of professionals just shows how the difficulty that they will face later on in the system. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's very good. of course, okay. yeah, and 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 also it's because I think the police. 
don't realize the, the systematic and they, the systemic like system behind all this because they are policemen and women and they see it as like individual rape but what we are trying to 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 show them and hopefully we we, we will succeed is it's a system it's like a systematic and it's a network of people who who use exploit and, and rape uh, vulnerable women so this is also a challenge but we have to start somewhere mm -hmm. Um, and to go back a little bit, you were talking about the way um, the way uh, Jackie and Michel is made so that they are never caught red-handed. So could you maybe explain to us a little bit what is the business model or what does it look like, the functioning of uh, Jackie and Michel? Of course. Uh, we I don't know everything about it because, like, you know, they don't uh, show their hands. But uh, based on the testimonies and what we know and, like, the video is that like big capitalists who hire offshore companies to launder the money, whatever, they hire providers. So it's a company, but like, so it's a company that it has not the name Jackie and Michel, even if it's very closely, closely works with them. So at the end, uh, they will rebuff us. They will say, oh, it's not us. We hired the company to do this and that. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, Hopefully, uh, people will see through this, and like the judicial judicial system will see through this. So this this is how they work, and like uh, what they said is that oh, it's not us. So we hired providers, but like it's you are you are um, you are showing film rape on your side. So uh, at one point, it's also a responsibility. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I, I hope that the judicial system can see the connection because it is just so easy to make the connection when politicians have offshores account and they are able to investigate that. So I like from a logical point of view, I, I would be very surprised that they don't see that connection. But we live in a patriarchal world and that is the reality of things. Yeah. Um, so would it be kind of like a, a parallel? Would it be that people cannot prosecute MindGeek because they would say that Pornhub uh, and them are dissociated or don't have a connection? Is that what you think? I think so. I, I am not really um, an expert in law. For me, it's like very straightforward, but I've not okay. had all the laws and I'm sure like they have the the, they have the money for the lawyers or whatever they, they will find the shortcut and the law whatever but um i think it could be a strategy and like uh, any other big company who tries to say oh this is not me or like sacrifice a fringe but uh, yeah we need to this is why our work needs to be uh, again uh, in front of lawyers and, and judges but also in front of people to show them that for example we, we can be for example i can not buy stuff from a company because i know that a subsidiary of this company exploits people in china or whatever so we need to use the same logic on, on mm -hmm. in, in porn exactly Okay, thank you for that, because that's actually new stuff for me as well. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you now if you can tell us some details about the state of porno criminality in France. Um, but I also wanted to know, how did the general public or the public that is not very familiar with questions of, uh, of pornography and uh, the analysis behind it, uh, how did the general public react to the, to the opening of the investigation? Would you say that it's a positive reaction? It's a positive reaction for us, uh, of course. I think, like the the video uh, was very powerful. It was like I, I couldn't even watch the entire video because it was just too violent, and what they were explaining were, were was too violent. So I think even even people who are pro pro uh, feminist porn or whatever you may call it, I don't call it uh, I don't call it feminist porn. Even people. Uh, in this in this group, we're like um, we're like this is unacceptable. But you know, uh, a lot of people are very good at blocking stuff. Like it's called uh, 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 cognitive dissonance. I think like they may you know like they, they see uh, oh yeah I am against uh, climate uh, climate change, but I'm still gonna eat uh, my steak every day uh, for a month. I think it's it's difficult. It, we need to start. Uh, like it start um, 
it's small because it's it's porn porn is everywhere and it's to, it's completely normalized it's normalized for a second woman but it's everywhere so it was a shock but i think people just didn't want to see what they already know so because i i don't i try not to watch uh, pornography um, so i am not up to date but um, but it's i think you cannot not see the violence and and, and even like I think it was not a big surprise for a lot of uh, for a lot of people, but uh, the, the the response was actually positive. Is that that it's, the, a lot of people said it's unacceptable what is happening mm -hmm. here in Belgium? We got a lot of um, surprising reactions to it because people were actually shocked uh, that a pornographic uh, platform would uh, actually host. Uh, would actually be complicit in um, in violence against women and all these things and it's it's really interesting to see the um, the lack of connection that is that is made this this kind of contrast between uh, you know like um, I don't know how to say this in English but like ethical pornography or pornography where people are uh, consentant they consent to it and then they realize that it's actually way m more cases than than the one that those victims that you were talking about put forward. So I, I really wish we can we can reach a, a society in, in which people don't make the such a big contrast between the two because they're the same, but not all the violences are uncovered. Yeah, and like, again, we, as you said, we live in a patriarchal <laughs> world and, and the, the porn industry is actually one of the, mo the richest uh, industry in the world. They have where would they have everything it takes and, and and like they systematically contribute to normalizing porn and films and series and ads and, and everything and like the way they 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 spread really like uh it's cancerous like they they use all the medias uh possible to to normalize porn they they start they uh, make it available for very very young people so they young people grow up on this stuff and they think it's normal so they are very powerful we are really really uh, david against goliath here because they are very very powerful they're everywhere and people who there's a reason why a lot of people don't see the connection is because they don't want them to see the connection and we have a lot of work to do but as feminists across the ages we always had big big issues that were normal and we had to start from scratch and we're gonna get through this because people women are gonna wake up and are waking up and saying no this is violence i feel very positive listening to you <laughs> <laughs> we need positivity in the feminist movement sometimes yeah. i really believe so otherwise we're just burnt out and there's nothing that we think we can achieve so i really appreciate you saying this today because this is we need it. I think that it's a trick. Uh, it's a trick. I I also sometimes it's, I'm very like I say I'm gonna die and 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 I'm, I'm still gonna be living in patriarchy and it's probably true. But when you look at where we started and like again I I come from Lebanon so it's a beautiful country when when it's not exploding and I see when I come here I come from a country where women cannot even give their nationality to their kids. So uh, I, I can see like the bit of difference and I have a bit of like, I see across the ages all the achievements that we made as feminists and I think it's just gonna continue. We always have monsters against us. We always have a system of structural difficulties. We're gonna overcome it because we're good like this. Let's go. <laughs> um, <laughs> on the issue of fighting against it and the feminist movement kind of working on these issues, uh, I would like to ask you, how does Ose de Feminism work to, to inform young... Uh, I suppose that you have a, a big public that is kind of young, like uh, young women. So I wanted to know how does uh, OLF work to, to inform and uh, bring awareness on these issues? Um, yeah, I just wanted to hear about your work in that, in that issue. Uh, we don't have... Um, I think a lot of people who, uh, who listen to us are people like... 25 to 35, we have a lot of young people also, young, young women and girls who, who, who listen to us, but I think um, we, we tended and we still tend to be very 
on the strong on the analysis part and it's i think the, the young people today are more for insta and it's okay it's normal I'm not gonna start judging them so we are trying also to evolve we will never compromise on the uh, analysis part and the big like we have a biannual a journal where we deconstruct uh, stuff uh, but we also, for example, doing uh, gonna be doing campaigns on Instagram. We ha we are gonna be uh, making very simple, very but uh, but heavy on the content. If you look uh, if you look at the big picture, we gonna we gonna do this. Uh, I was speaking about the journal. So every every six months, we we send our um, people who are uh, registered. Uh, we send them a journal. So like. Uh, mm -hmm. Lately, we did a journal concent um, concentrated on the question of uh, porno criminality. So we deconstructed all the myths and we talked about the misogyny, the violence, but also we talked about inherent racism, inherent uh, lesb um, discrimination against lesbians. Uh, so we did this. And we also are trying to develop more content about um, for adolescents. So we, we have a, a site, it's called Les Frangines. It's it's for young girls like eleven to fifteen, and it talks about sexuality in a feminist way. So we're also trying to to develop these kind of contents that are specifically for for young uh, women and girls to 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 reach out more and to to have something that is uh, that's easily uh, readable and interactive with, with, with younger younger uh, younger feminists in the making. <laughs> <laughs> And you also do those uh, feminist camps, right? Uh, twice yes, a year or exactly. Twice a year. So this year we uh, we had a feminist camp uh, in March that was um, reported because uh, the COVID uh, crisis. Um, like for for pornography as well, we do it's the last three or four feminist camps. We always do a workshop where we talk about pornography. At the last feminist camp, we talked about pornography. At the next feminist camp, we also do a workshop where we talk about pornography. So we, we uh, are one of the fewer, few uh, French uh, organizations that is completely uh, direct about being anti-pornography. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to just to tell the general audience that um, if they didn't have to ch the chance to to see this video now, or if they want to watch it again, you can always uh, revert to our uh, YouTube channel. I will leave it on the comments. Um, I wanted to ask you about the Frangine. So I tell the the viewers, is it a it's a website? You said, yeah, it's a, it's a website. Uh, so it's lesfrangines uh, dot o l f dot Fr, okay. so it's a it's a website that is uh, demystifies uh, demystifies some myths about sexuality, uh, for example, uh, myths about blue balls or if he's jealous that means he loves you, and like uh, women, uh, like sexual intercourse has to be um, has to be done with uh, pardon, uh, a sexual penetration has to be done in order to have sex, stuff like that. Uh, and it's it's also a frontal attack about uh, pornography culture and patriarchal culture and all the myths. Uh, and it's also we're making girls more comfortable with their bodies because we are our bodies after all. Mm -hmm. And I think this this is such a, a great description of what you do because it is by starting small and starting like this that we can actually bring awareness to to young women at least on on the harms of pornography. The fact that they feel comfortable in their own bodies, that they that they know that they respect their boundaries when they are either with men or or with women, um, and th this this should be actually sexual education and not pornography as as we see it on on TV, but also online and everywhere. So I think this is such important work, and I think this is also very essential for for women to understand the harms of pornography later on when they are ready to have a an analysis and read more about it. So I'm really happy this website exists. I've never personally seen it, but I will definitely check it out and, and send it to my 
to my younger ladies. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to get it translated, but um, we've been um, we've been busy with like lots of stuff. But we try. Ideally, we want it to be to be uh, available in many languages. And I'm also trying to. Uh, I had a Lebanese friend who wanted to, to translate it to Arabic, but uh, then then the it stuff happened work. in Lebanon. So <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, do you want to say anything yet to our viewers or do you want to leave us with the last message? If not, it's it's totally okay. I know I just maybe put you on the spot there. <laughs> no, no problem. But I see that Anna, uh, Anna did, uh, has a question for me. So I'm going to read it and, and reply to it first in the comments. Uh, okay. So uh, what can, should we do to visibilize French and Arab feminist analysis and sentence presence in the feminist theory? which is heavily dominated by American academia, detached from the reality of vast majority of women? Yeah, I think <laughs> this is a good question. I'm not sure I know exactly uh, the, uh, the answer. I think what works most is concrete examples, because the problem with theory is it's, it's, it's lovely, like, but like, I, it took me one year to, uh, to read the, the both volumes of, um, of uh, Simone de Beauvoir, Deuxième Sex, The Second Sex. It's very heavy. I think we need to be pragmatic about it. And I think we need to show examples. And I think we need to, like, for example, the case of Jacqueline and Michel, to, to, to speak about it, to explain the structural harms of pornography. I see in other countries where a case about the front of a judge can always bring people to think about it. I think we need to start from a pragmatic case because I, humans as a race, we're very emotional. <laughs> so we need to, to touch them with emotion at first, only to see that they are human beings because as women and girls, patriarchy thinks, uh, make us not human in front of even our eyes as, as, uh, as Dworkin has said. So I think we need to show examples to, to remind people that girls and women are, we are real. We are our bodies and we exist. And then start from there. It's, it may be one case and, and, uh, and another case is, is to combat misinformation and myths that makes uh, gender stereotypes and, and patriarchal ideas. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not French nor Arab, so I cannot answer that, but I, I totally agree with you. I think um, one of the things that needs to be done in, in the feminist movement, if we want it to continue to our little sisters and cousins and daughters, if we are ever to be mothers, um, I think it's really to kind of um, simplify the content, the content that we have and make it accessible for so that other younger women can understand because I think we're very lucky to have uh, predecessors and women that, that taught us and helped us and we are able, we have access to books and things like that, but the reality is that some things are not that easy to understand. You gave the example of Simon, I, I took like one year to read the, to read the, um, I think it was, yeah, I, I don't remember the author right now, but I think it took me uh, a year, yeah, Mary Daly. It took me a year to read the, like many things of Mary Daly and at the end I understood, uh, but we need to find a way to to put this uh, into action and to to simplify it. Yeah, so, Angie yeah. Edworkin, I love her, but again, and I love how she writes, but it's, it's actually heavy stuff. So exactly, we need to fight like against us, we have people who are, will do two visuals about, oh, prostitution is empowering and they have like 30,000 likes and it's simple. <laughs> it's just to be as simple as them in order to captivate the attention and then explain them, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe a, it's a one way to think about it. Yes. Thank you so much, Fabien, for being with us today. Uh, Thank you for I having me. Always. Um, I'm, really, I'm really looking forward to, uh, for you to maybe get that research on the effects of prostitution on, uh, on women. Uh, I think it would be so valuable to have that in the, in the medical mainstream, as you said. And uh, yeah, I hope we, can, we keep in touch and we invite you for, for other things. Thank you also to the sisters of, uh, of OLF for, for agreeing to, to be represented by Fabienne. And yes, that's it. I, I don't know if you have anything else to say. 
<laughs> no, just uh, thank you and always a pleasure to uh, to work with you. Yeah. I, I also love your organization. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You have a great night. Uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to say to our viewers, as I was saying before, uh, if you want to rewatch this video, it stays on the you know, uh, Facebook page feed. But we also have a YouTube channel that you can access. Um, I will make sure to, to leave the link here. Um, it's called European Network of Migrant Women and then you know, uh, because we have two channels, one doesn't work. Uh, so yeah, you're welcome to watch any of the videos that we had before and uh, we will see you all for the next Migrant Woman Reality Watch. Thank you. Au revoir. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.